Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. The word wait means to expect God. Are you expecting God to show up in your life today? Are you expecting God to speak to you today? Are you expecting to hear God's voice? This weekend I've been talking about, I actually called it, what do you want out of life? But it's really about your goals, your dreams, your visions. Hopefully you have one. If you don't, you're probably a pretty bored person because God has created us to reach. No matter where you're at, he's always created you to reach. I mentioned last night that we always want the mountaintop, but actually on the mountaintop, all you really see is the next mountaintop. And nothing grows on mountaintops. The growth is all in the valley. And so we have to learn to value the valleys in our life and understand that we're not just going to live on the mountaintop. Actually, when you get to the mountaintop or the quicker you learn to get to mountaintops, the more mountains you're going to see, <laughs> the more things out there that God's going to call you to conquer and mountains to climb because God is always, always, always on the move. How many of you find in your life that he's always on the move? So. I've been trying to draw an analogy about pregnancy, birth and delivery, being able to conceive. A woman cannot become pregnant if she can't conceive. And the word conceive not only means to give birth, but it means to think or imagine. So if you cannot conceive in your mind that God can do something with you, then you will never even take the first step toward a better life than what you have now. You just, you have to believe it. Be it unto you even as you believe. The promises of God for whosoever will. I shared Colossians 3.11 last night that once we are new creatures in Christ, no matter what has happened in the past, we all start out in God on a level playing field. Doesn't matter what you don't have or how many disadvantages you have had. In Christ, we all, 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 that means you, we all have an equal opportunity. But it's not just up to God. Somebody can even come and prophesy to you. Ten prophets can come and prophesy the same thing to you. Thus saith the Lord. Blah, 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 blah. That doesn't mean that it's automatically going to happen. When you get a word from God, it means that here's a possibility. Not a positively, but a possibility. Because you have a part, and you're going to have to read the Word and not only be able to conceive a new thing for your life, which part of that conceiving is to see it. We talked a lot on Thursday night about what do you see? But then you have to, once you conceive, just like a woman who conceives a child, you have to make it through pregnancy. And pregnancy can be kind of a messy, confusing time in your life. It's a time of change. And then not only do you have to make it all the way to full-term pregnancy, not trying to birth early, not aborting and giving up, but once you get to full-term, then you have to be ready for labor and delivery. And so that's where we're at today. Labor and delivery. I would like to give you donuts and a syrupy drink from Starbucks, but that's not what you're going to get this morning. You're going to get spinach and vegetables and meat and all the stuff that will help you make it through to the end, okay? So, very first scripture, Ecclesiastes 5.3. For a dream comes with much business and painful effort. <laughs> and a fool's voice with many words. It's pretty easy to foolishly say, yes, I have a dream, I'm going to do this and that. Yes, I have a vision for my life, I'm going to do this and that. And that's a starting place you've got to conceive, but it will only come to pass with much business and not just effort, but painful effort. 
you do not even begin to have the time for me to even scratch the surface of telling you what I've gone through in the 32 years since God called me to get from where I was to where I am now. And I don't regret any of it except some of the stupid things I did, which sad to say, you really can't, you just can't make progress without making some mistakes. I mean, part of making progress is making mistakes. And if you can't learn from what God's telling you, then you will learn by your mistakes. It's just all part of learning how to hear from God. And, you know, we're all so fleshly and full of ourselves when God first calls us. And, man, we're like Abraham and Sarah. If God's taking too long, we get a good plan and we try to birth a few things on our own. And then it takes another few years to undo that damage that we've done. And I tell you what, there's a whole lot more to what you see than this pulpit or that few minutes on television every morning. That's probably the smallest part of what we do. There is much business and painful effort. And really, I would say even, even if your home is a mess and you want to get your home and your finances in order, God's been really dealing with you. There's things in your marriage you need to tend to. Don't put stuff off. If you know that God is dealing with you about something, deal with it while it's a little fire. Don't wait until you've got a blaze consuming your home. And God shows us things. He gives us warnings. If that doesn't change, da-da-da-da-da. If this doesn't happen, da-da-da-da-da. And so many people are so bad about putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Why? Because it's not what we want to do. We know it's going to be painful. We know it's going to be messy. We know it's going to require effort. And so we just keep putting it off one more day, hoping for the next preacher to come to town with a miracle service that can deliver us and set us free. <laughs> Amen? I don't know if they're still having them or not, and I don't mean to be rude to anybody, but for a while people were having... Miracle debt cancellation services. And, uh, oh. <laughs> and I know that God can do miracles and he can get you out of debt. But if you got in debt through stupidity, <laughs> chances are God's going to help you get out of debt. But it's not going to be an overnight miraculous thing. Because if it is, you're not going to learn a lesson. You'll turn around and go do the same thing all over again. <laughs> Hallelujah. So even if God is dealing with you about getting your home in order, getting your marriage straightened out, getting your finances in order, just getting things cleaned up. Get the junk out of your house. Clean the garage. Clean, you know, hmm. a lot of people are out trying to cast out devils and they don't even have authority over a sink full of dirty dishes yet. <laughs> Come on now. So we need to get a few things straightened out at home. Hallelujah. It doesn't do any good to come to church and be spiritual and holy and ooey gooey Christian with your Christian friends, when at home, behind closed doors, you're a terror. <laughs> Come on now, this isn't, even, this isn't even in my message. This is just coming out. <laughs> Amen. So even those kind of dreams and visions come to pass with much business and painful effort. It is not easy to change, but it is oh so worth it. And it is much easier than staying in bondage. I said last night, you can't get drive-through breakthroughs. We can get drive-through everything here in America, but you can't get a drive-through breakthrough. But you can get an anointed go-through. God will anoint you to go through. All right, so... Let's talk a little bit more about pregnancy. Pregnancy is a time of first expectation. It's kind of interesting because when a woman is present, pregnant, the terminology that we use is she's expecting. Expecting. So part of seeing your dreams come to pass is you much, must not let the thief steal your dream, your vision. You must keep expecting. And I believe that expectation needs to be aggressive. And I think we need to talk about it to God, preferably early every morning. Your voice is extremely important. God said, let there be light. And there was light. I think about ten times in the first few verses of Genesis, God said something. He didn't just think something. He said something. And we need to learn the power of our words. The power of life and death is in 
the tongue. And it's important what you say to other people. It's important what you say about yourself. But it's also important just what you say about your future and your expectations. Amen? Get up in the morning, talk out loud. I did a lot of talking this morning. Sitting in my hotel room with my Bible in my lap, I did a lot of talking. I'm expecting favor. I'm expecting good news. I hate bad news. So I've been saying every day, I'm expecting good news. I'm expecting favor everywhere I go. I'm expecting to feel better today than I did yesterday. I'm expecting wisdom. I'm expecting to be sharp mentally. I'm expecting this message today to be the best message I've ever preached in my life. Are you expecting anything or are you just one of those wait and see people? It's so easy to fall into that passive attitude. Well, you know, you get up and see what happens. Well, we cannot always control what happens with our confession, but I'll tell you one thing. The more you say of what God says, the more likely you are to have it. And the more you say of what the devil says, the more likely you are to have it. Who are you in agreement with? Come on now. So it's a time of expectation. I love Psalm 27, 13. What, what, David said, what, exclamation mark, what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Not just in the sweet by and by when I go to heaven, but in the land of the living. And what about this thing about waiting on God? What does waiting on God mean? Is it a passive, static place where we just kind of go, waiting on God? No, it is a time in your life where you are not getting into works of the flesh. You're not taking matters into the, your own hands and trying to do what only God can do. So although you are waiting physically, you are very active spiritually. You understand that? And what we do is usually the opposite. We don't have anything going on spiritually and we're busy in the flesh trying to make all these things happen. And actually, the word wait means to expect God. Are you expecting God to show up in your life today? Are you expecting God to speak to you today? Are you expecting to hear God's voice? Are you expecting change in you and change in your family and change in the world and change in your finances? Well, I never thought much about that, sister. You know why we don't think about it? Because we live too much in the natural and we just let life suck us up, steal our dreams and visions. And you've got to stay aggressive. I mean, aggressive is such a great word. I love the scripture that says that the kingdom of God has suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. It's two different kinds of violence. The first one is like demonic attack, and the second one is aggressive godly action. If you're on the attack, you won't be under the attack. Well, I don't feel like that. Well, I don't either. But it's amazing. If you get up and start being aggressive in the spirit, your flesh will catch up with your spirit. It really will. You'll feel so much better. So expectation. When you're pregnant, you're expecting. It's also a time of preparation. I'd like us to go to the book of Esther in chapter 2. So when the king's command and his decree were proclaimed, and when many maidens were gathered in Shushan, the capital under the custody of Haggai, Esther also was taken. <laughs> you ever wonder, how did I get here? This isn't what I had planned. This isn't where I want to be. What am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing here. You know, I'm sure that Esther had some kind of a plan for her life. And I'll bet you it wasn't to be in the king's harem. She was a sweet Jewish girl, a very young girl. I'm sure she knew the word of God and was a very moral young lady. Who knows, maybe she even had her eyes on a young man that she had felt like that she would marry for years. And all of a sudden, life just did not turn out for her the way she thought it would turn out. Come on now, I'm talking to somebody. 
I said, and all of a sudden, life just didn't turn out for her the way she thought it would turn out. I believe there's people here, and certainly many that will be watching this by television, that you feel that way right now. It's like, man, this is not what I had planned, and you're all bummed out about it, and you're kind of bitter about the way your life has been, but today you need to get a new attitude. Stop saying you trust God if you're going to fall apart every time things don't go the way you want them to. You know, sometimes we just think, well, we want God to do what he's doing in us a different way. But we need to trust him. Dave has told me, and he would stand up here and tell you, I believe that God put me in your life to crucify your flesh. <laughs> now, what kind of a thing is that to tell your wife? But I can tell you that it is the truth. Because Dave has been so stable and so rooted and grounded in what was right. And I was such a mess. And he just wouldn't give in. And over a, while, over a period of time, I finally realized, well, either I'm going to change or this is never going to work because he ain't going to change. <laughs> <laughs> I got a sister up there. And I finally learned that it was not Dave's responsibility to make me happy. That was my responsibility. And instead of getting up every day and getting mad because he wasn't making me happy, I need to get up every day and do everything I could to make him happy, then God would make me happy. Now come on, I'm going to download a few things on you in the next two or three minutes that took me 40 years to learn. Stop giving somebody else the responsibility to keep you happy. Just get happy. Amen? Get happy. And I had to learn that all I was responsible for before God was my part. See, I'm always like, well, Dave's not doing this, and Dave's not doing that, and Dave and Dave and Dave and Dave and Dave. And, Dave. and sometimes when God would be dealing with me so strongly, I remember one time God was dealing with me so strongly about being respectful to my husband, just speaking respectfully. And that was all a challenge for me because, I mean, I just, my life had been full of just men that were jerks. And I didn't have proper respect for the male species. <laughs> Can I get a witness from anybody in here? And you know, it's just, it's an attitude. It's an attitude that gets in you. And all my life, I've been forced to do things I didn't want to do, and I was just kind of determined, I am nobody is going to push me around again. So there was just a real attitude problem there, and I was not pleasing God like Esther pleased Haggai because <laughs> I didn't have a good attitude. And I remember one time when God was really dealing with me about being respectful to Dave, and I thought in the midst of it that sometimes he was being disrespectful to me. So I'm going to God and saying, well, why aren't you dealing with him? And then I thought, well, may maybe, maybe God is dealing with him, and I just don't know it. So I asked him one day. I said, is God dealing with you about anything? Because I've been praying so hard for God to deal with Dave. I mean, really, I was praying so hard for God. It's like, okay, God, I'll do this, but you've got to deal with him too. I am not doing this by myself. I am not going to be the only one to change. Is anybody in the house today? And I said to Dave, is God dealing with you about anything? And he said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and I got so mad. I was so like, God! <laughs> My goodness. And I had to learn. I'm only responsible for my part. Stop worrying about what somebody else is doing, isn't doing what they're not giving you they, that you think they should give you, and learn how to ask God for what you want and need and let Him bring it to you however He chooses. Amen? Now, if I get too carried away here, Dave will come up and straighten me out, so I'm going to move on to another subject. But really, in many ways, God did put Him into my life, not only to love me and protect me and encourage me and stand beside me and help me be all that I can be, but he really did put him in my life to help crucify my flesh. I know that. And there are some people that are in your life that are tools from God. Hello. 
Maybe one's a hammer, maybe one's a saw. <laughs> maybe one's a set of pruning shears. But honestly, there are people in your life that God has put there on purpose, and even if you get rid of them, you will find two more just like them in another body <laughs> somewhere else. Can I get a witness? Yeah. So enough about that. Esther had a good attitude. <laughs> and we're in verse 9. The maiden pleased Haggai. She had a good attitude. And number two, obtained his favor. Now here's what I want you to realize. No matter where you're at right now, if you have a good attitude, God will give you favor. Yeah. And I just think the favor of God is the most fun thing. It is just so amazing to watch God just purposely pour out favor and blessing on you when you just know it's Him. And He, I love this, and He speedily gave her the things for her purification. Wow. So what am I seeing here? If I have a good attitude, I'm going to make it through the wilderness a lot faster than if I have a bad attitude. He speedily gave her the things that she needed for her purification. How many of you would like a little more speed in your life? Well, then check your attitude. <laughs> Come on, this is my last chance at you for another year. I got to go for it. And he speedily gave her her portion of food and the seven chosen maids to be given to her from the king's palace. And I love this part coming up. And he removed her and her maids to the best apartment in the harem. They got the best apartment. They got favor. Speedily. He gave her seven of the choice maids. But it all started with she was taken. Life wasn't going the way she thought it should go. But she pleased him by having a good attitude. I don't think that we can ever say enough for attitude. And you know something? Let me tell you the truth. No matter what is going on in your life, if you choose to have a good attitude, you can have a good attitude. That is something nobody can take away from you. Something nobody can take away from you. And if you want to have a bad attitude, there's nothing anybody can do to help you. Verse 10, now Esther had not made known her nationality or her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her not to do so. And Mordecai, who was, at, who was an attendant to the king, walked every day before the court of the harem to learn how Esther was and what would become of her. Now when the turn of each maiden came to go into King Ahasuerus, after the regulations for the women had been carried out, for 12 months, now watch this, since this was the regular period for their beauty treatments. <laughs> oh man, I wish that I could have got through it with 12 months of beauty treatments. <laughs> oh no, man, I had beauty treatments at least 25 years and I'm still getting touch-ups. <laughs> Is anybody getting this? <laughs> it was a time of separation for Esther. A time of preparation for Esther. You know, you just can't be like everybody else if you want to see your dreams and visions come to pass. I'm sorry, but we are in the world. We don't need to act like we're not. But we're not of it. And the, the hugest problem that we have today is it's difficult in many instances to tell the difference between a Christian and an unbeliever. And I don't think we should have to recognize each other by our bumper stickers. I'm sorry, but I don't think that's how we should look to see if somebody's a Christian. Do you have a fish on your car? You will know them by their fruit. Well, you know, sometimes I like, like to talk to people about labor and delivery and relate that to waiting for the things that you're believing God to do in your life. You know, it's like you're going through the hard parts but you need to keep a good attitude while you're waiting for the delivery. So be a person that expects good things all the way through. 
I believe that many times we get negative in the middle of our wait and then that just puts off the answer. So don't even be a person who just has a passive, well, we'll see attitude, but be aggressive. I'm expecting something good to happen in my life today. And you know what? Even if things don't turn out exactly the way you thought that they would, they're going to turn out good. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and you know taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, it's really great to have the ability to feed children all around the world. And I have a goal and a desire to keep feeding more and more all the time. This after-school feeding program serves an average of 90 to 100,000 hot meals per One year. One meal for these kids is, is survival. Well, I'm here in Thailand at one of our children's homes. You can feed, house, and educate a child. Hope Cambodia has been absolutely amazing. We've opened 15 different orphanages. And we're so grateful to be able to build this well here in Sri Lanka. We love to get clean drinking water to people. Well, so the water they're drinking is not making their children sick, and it's, it's not dirty, contaminated water. <laughs> definitely feel in Haiti just the absolute desperation. I'm at the Cure Hospital in Malawi, Africa. A huge line of people who are waiting to see our nurses and our doctors. Many doctors and medical people have volunteered their time. We are in Summers Point, New Jersey. Well, today we're, we're in Joplin, Missouri. We're here in Haiti in the village, and we're about to move people into brand new houses we've built. The winds were so constant with these big, big gusts. It was terrifying. 150 or more were killed. Thousands left homeless. Hey, you there, guys. Uh, those gifts from Joyce Five Ministries. Here in Zimbabwe, I was able to hand out the two millionth bag in a prison. That you can't have it. Today. Don't know how many, you know, lives you guys save by coming in and showing the love that you guys show. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change. You can get healing. You can survive. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. De muziekleraar van Beethoven noemde hem een hopeloze componist. Een krant ontsloeg Walt Disney met het argument dat het hem zou ontbreken aan creativiteit. Albert Einstein werd door zijn leraar als geestelijk achtergebleven bestempeld. 
Well, you know, you have greatness on the inside of you too. And no matter how many challenges you have in life, I'm here to tell you, don't you ever give up. De New York Times bestseller schrijfster Joyce Meyer zal je inspireren om ondanks moeilijke levensomstandigheden sterk te blijven. Bestel nu het boek Geef Nooit Op via onze website joy-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Ga ook eens naar de Facebookpagina van Joyce Meijer Nederland. Like deze pagina en je krijgt regelmatig exclusief een video van Joyce op jouw Facebook met korte, inspirerende boodschappen die voor nieuwe impulsen zorgen in je dagelijks leven. Dat en meer bij Joyce Meijer Nederland op Facebook.